That's fine. But you're wrecking your life. And this is about you figuring out what I'm about to tell you. And that's not only do you matter, you are powerful. And we don't get comfortable with this idea that we have power. Because we're afraid that we won't live up to the power that we have in ourselves. And it's time to stop being afraid of living into that most powerful self. And it's time to start figuring out what stops you from being that person right now in your life. Because you're addicted to this idea that life just happens to you. That your parents are going to make your decisions. Your teachers are going to tell you what to do. That somebody else will always be giving you direction and pointing you where to go and telling you what to accomplish. How many of you enjoy that idea? You like that idea of having everybody tell you what to do? Right? It's not a fun idea, is it? Oh, see, and then we blame, we say, oh, I'm indecisive. Well, guess what? You can get better at that. Everything's a skill. Being decisive is a skill. Being happy is a skill. Owning your life is a skill. And the challenge for you guys is to get better at owning your life. What do you want it to be? Don't sit in a class and say, this is boring. The teacher's stupid. They never tell me anything. That's on you, not on them. Because what happens is this thing behind us. What stands in your way of actually being that most powerful self? You do. It's not your teacher. It's not your mom and dad. It's not the person down the road. It's you. And we have to start figuring out what do we do that stops us from becoming the most powerful person that we can be. Right? The first thing that gets in your way is your brain. Now, I know that sounds really weird, but your brain is actually designed to keep you safe above anything else. Okay, you have two major things in your life. One of them is to survive. And so your brain is wired to make sure that you survive. If something is difficult or uncertain or scary, your brain is designed to act as the hero that jumps in and says, hey, let's get out of this situation. This is scary. We could get hurt here. Now, 20,000 years ago, that was great. Because we're running around, our ancestors are running around in the bushes and they hear something rustling over there. That might be a warring tribe ready to kill us and take our food. That might be a saber tooth tiger that's ready to jump out and kill us and eat us. And so our brain is geared to, we survived because our brain was like, whoa, we better get away from this. It's uncertain. It's scary. And so we survived in some way. But we still have that same mechanism to when something gets difficult, when something's uncertain or something is scary, we tend to hide. We tend to do something to get out of that situation. But there's a huge problem that goes along with that. Growing in life involves you getting out of your comfort zone. Remember, there's no growth in the comfort zone. But there's lots of growth when you get outside of your comfort zone. 
but getting outside of your comfort zone means you are going to feel that things are scary. You're going to feel that things are difficult. You're going to feel that things are challenging. And your brain is designed to protect you from those things, not help you thrive in that situation. And so you have to start looking at this. When you, when you are scared, you're not weak. That's normal. Right? It's OK for you to feel those feelings of, of uncertainty. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I want to do here. I'm worried about what's going to happen. Those are normal feelings. Your brain is just trying to keep you safe from what it perceives as a threat. What we think the answer is to this is motivation. We think that, oh, I'm going to get motivated, and that's what's going to get me to go out and do the things that I need to do in order to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. Because we all have these brilliant ideas. Right? We all have these brilliant ideas. We think the only thing that stops is we don't have that spark that's going to get us going. It's like, hey, I'm going to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to get strong. And I'm going to do it every day. And then I'm going to be really muscly, and all the girls are going to love me. Right? Right? Or I'm going to go run, and I'm going to do it, and I'm going to be like really thin and fit, and it's going to be great. And we think the only thing we're missing is motivation. And that's not true. Right? We have so many great ideas, and we wait for the motivation to get off our rear ends and go out and live our best life, to be that powerful self that we want to be, but we don't believe that we can be. And we think the missing ingredient is motivation, but there's a huge, huge problem with motivation. And it kind of goes back to your brain again. You are never going to feel like doing those things that are difficult, uncertain, and scary. Because your brain's wired to protect you from those things. And so when we sit back and we wait for the moment, we know it's going to be not fun to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning. That's uncertain. That's difficult. And we know that maybe we're going to work out and we're not going to get as big as we want to. And so our brain starts sending these signals, and it's like, wait a minute, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And we get in our, we get stuck where we don't feel like doing the thing that seconds ago we thought was a great idea, that we know will change our life if we do it, but we blame it on motivation. Oh, I'm just lazy. I don't have the motivation to do it. That's an excuse. Right? And it stems from these ideas that we're talking about. You are motivated to do the things that are easy. When something's easy, how hard is it to sit down and binge watch on Netflix? So easy. We're motivated to do that, right? I'm motivated to go home and watch Stranger Things. Right? I'm motivated to go home and do something. I'm motivated to eat a Snickers bar. That's easy, right? When something's harder, we lose a little bit of that motivation. Right? And we think that we're lazy, that there's something wrong with us. We're just motivated to do what's easy. Anything that's difficult, uncertain, or scary stops us. Here's how it stops us. When we see something that we're like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Right? That might be hard. That might be, that's a little bit scary. We hesitate. And it's the simple little trick that your brain uses, and it's the sneakiest thing, because we don't ever think that hesitation is the problem. We don't ever think that it's a problem to say, oh, wait, maybe I'll think about that. Because sometimes that's a great thing to do. Sometimes it's good to sit back and say, man, I'm going to think about that for a minute. But if we're thinking about everything, if we're hesitating on even the most simple things, that's a problem. And so we have to start conquering this battle of hesitation because when we hesitate, it invites us to get stuck somewhere where we don't ever want to get stuck with Drake. All right? You know what I'm saying? Where does Drake get stuck? In his feelings, you familiar with this song? Ha ha, funny. Okay. All right, I'll get rid of this slide because apparently that wasn't even close to as funny as I was hoping it was going to be. But we get stuck with Drake in our feelings. We get trapped in our feelings. And our feelings actually are our worst enemy at times. Our feelings are liars. There are many times our feelings are going to tell us something because your brain's trying to keep you safe. And so we use our feelings as a good excuse. Well, I'm not going to go talk to that girl on the other side of the lunchroom because I'm afraid she's going to turn me down. Right? We get a little bit scared, and so we hesitate. And then we get stuck in our feelings, and that's a bad place to be. Right? Because your feelings are what stop you from doing the things that you know you should be doing. See, if you're looking at your phone right now playing a game, that means you're stuck in your feelings. 
You're not feeling like listening to Mr. Crandall today. I'm not feeling it today. How many of you ever said that? I'm not feeling it today. And everybody better raise their hand because I know you all say this. I don't feel like doing this class today. I don't feel like doing my homework today. I don't feel like doing this. Mom, I don't feel like mowing the lawn. We all say this all the time. And we get stuck. How many of you recognize that? I don't feel like going to class. I don't feel like doing my homework. Okay? We say these things. I don't feel like working out. I don't think, if somebody tells you they're excited to go and work out every single time they go and work out, they're probably lying. Because it's hard. Anything that's difficult, uncertain, or scary, we're naturally not motivated to do. And so our feelings start trying to get us to stop doing those things because we're only motivated to do the things that are easy. Okay? We don't feel like treating people well every day. We will often treat people like garbage because we're feeling like garbage. Hangry is a real thing. And when you get hangry, when you're angry because you're hungry, and you're angry because you're hungry, we treat other people bad because we're not feeling great. We use our feelings as, as this thing that, that excuses us for treating people poorly, for not being grateful, and for not giving our best effort. How many times have we just dogged it on something? I'm not feeling like it in my life. I see, I see guys do this in practice all the time. Right, how come you're not running hard today? No, I'm not feeling great. I don't feel like it. It's a great excuse. But here's the problem with your feelings. At the end of your feelings is nothing. At the end of your feelings, you might get a little bit of happiness, you might get a little bit of something, but it doesn't last. And this is why people spend their entire lives chasing happiness, because happiness is elusive. Happiness is a feeling, and it comes and it goes. You can be happy one day and go to bed really happy and wake up the next morning and you don't feel happy anymore. And then we start, what's wrong with me? I don't feel happy anymore. And we get stuck in our feelings. Oh, now I don't feel like going to school today because I'm not happy. And when we, when we start chasing feelings, it's never good. Right? We start chasing feelings and we don't get what we want long term. We might do something that makes us a little bit happy right now. But it's not going to last. And if you want feelings that last, if you want good, positive things that are going to last and really be beneficial in your life, you have to figure out a different way to go out and get them. Quit being trapped in your feelings and start living by principles. Now, this is the skill we're working on today. The skill is we've got to get better at executing and living our principles. But we don't spend a lot of time thinking about what are our principles. We don't spend a lot of time thinking about what is it that's really, really important to me in my life and what's going to make a real difference. And that's why we're always chasing our feelings. If I, if I live by a principle, a value or an idea that can guide your life, the principle says I'm in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. If that's my principle, I'm going to avoid trouble almost everywhere in my life. Because if you think about when you've gotten in trouble in your life, you weren't doing at least one of those three things. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time doing the wrong thing. When we get in trouble, it's because we're not in the right place at the right time doing the right thing. But that's a principle you have to train yourself to live by. You can't just flip that switch and think, oh, I'm gonna, I'll go to class. I'm going to go to class now. Because if you're used to playing by your feelings, you will not feel like going to class more often than you're going to feel like going to class. You won't feel like going to your jet time. Oh, that's stupid. If you're saying that's stupid and using that as an excuse not to go, or, oh, that's not for me, that's for other people, those are your feelings talking. Those are principles. Right? You've got to learn to live by principles. Principle says I'll execute my workouts even when it's hard. Right? I admire so much the athletes and the, the people that work on their performance because it's not easy to do that. Right, we got all the awesome ballroom team down here in front. Do you guys feel like going and practicing every single time you go to practice? No, because sometimes life is hard. Sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you're hungry. Sometimes you're stressed. And you don't always feel like doing those things. I don't always feel like going home after a 15-hour day and doing a seven-mile run. I promise you. I don't. It's not fun. But if your principle says, I go and I do my workouts even when it's hard, even when I'm tired, and you live by your principle, guess what happens? You find happiness. And it's a different kind of happiness. It's not the kind of happiness that just goes away. It's the kind of happiness where you 
grow it into an even bigger feeling like joy or satisfaction or even confidence. We'll talk about that in a second, how we can use principles to grow our confidence. Principle says I treat people the way I want to be treated. So even if I'm feeling bad, even if somebody was mean to me, if my principle says I treat people the way I want to be treated, I'm going to treat people well. But if I'm stuck in my feelings and someone's mean to me, it's easier for me to be mean back to them. See how this works? And if you're honest with yourself, you're stuck in your feelings almost all the time. It happens to every single one of us because our brain likes to keep us there. It's trying to keep us safe from the uncertainty, safe from the difficulty, safe from the things that might harm us in some way. Principle says I'm going to be grateful because I know it increases my happiness. Principle says I always give my best effort. Have you made the commitment in your life to always give your best effort regardless of your circumstances? Because you can practice that right now. See, if you're sitting here in the jet talk, your best effort is I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to put my phone away. I'm going to take notes. I'm going to get something out of this. If you're living by your feelings, you're like, I'm just going to talk to my friend. They're funnier than Mr. Crandall. They're more important. Okay? Feelings and principles, it shows up in every aspect of your life. Examples of principles, I never miss a workout. I leave things better than I found it. If your principle is, I leave things better than I found it, would you ever do any stupid graffiti on anything, anywhere? No. I'm sick and tired of seeing stuff drawn on desks in the school. All right? That's people that are living by their feelings. I'm bored. Or it's a feeling. Or it's a choice. Right? You can choose to go the other direction. But don't get stuck in your feelings being bored and then start doodling and say, well, I wasn't feeling it. I was bored. Feelings are bad when you get stuck there. The skill you're practicing is using principles to create the feelings, not allowing the feelings to steer your life. See, owning your life is getting intentional about what you want to have happen in your life. If you want to make something happen in your life, what are you doing today to help move in that direction? Or are you just sitting there saying, oh, I'm not feeling it today. I'll work on it later. We'll get back to that idea in a minute. But this is a, you can use this to create confidence. Anybody want more confidence in your life? Every hand should be up because we all want more confidence. We all need more confidence. Right? We love hanging around confident people. Remember, confident is I'm good, cocky is I'm better than you. So we're not talking about being better than somebody else, but we are talking about growing feelings of confidence within ourselves. Going back to working out. If I've worked a 15-hour day and I know I've got a seven-mile run when I get home, I'm not going to feel like doing it, am I? I'm not going to feel like going home and putting on my running clothes and going out for my run. But if I do it, if I stick with my principle that I never miss a workout, when I get back from that run, how do I feel? I feel pretty good. I know that I did something hard. I can honor myself for that. It's easy to look at that and say, I did something challenging. And that's how you grow confidence. See, we worry about, oh, my friends can trust me. Oh, okay, my friends can count on me. How many times do we spend time thinking about, can I count on myself? And that's what confidence is, is knowing that you can count on yourself to do the right thing in the right situation. And if we work on developing that, if we've proven to ourselves time and time again that even when it's hard, I will do the right thing. Even when I don't feel like going to class, I will go to class. That grows confidence. It's pretty cool that you can create those feelings within yourself simply by living by your principles. If you're using your feelings to guide your life, you're going to have trouble. You're going to end up in drama. You're going to end up in places you don't want to be. But if you live by your principles, you can create the feelings you want. Living by your principles is the path to lasting happiness. Living by your principles is the path to lasting success. It's accomplishing the things you want to accomplish. All those things that you have popping around in your head, remember, you're powerful. And you want to do great things. And you're capable of doing great things. And you're worthy of doing great things. But you have to prove to yourself that you can do those great things. And the pathway to doing that is to live by your principles. Step up your game and figure out what are my principles and am I living by them.
and then you will start to generate those feelings you want in your life. You want more confidence, you want more happiness, it's right there for you if you find your principles and you execute them. And that's what we're going to start talking about next week is creating a value system or a principle system where you know what you stand for. And you can start living into that. You can start proving to yourself that you're capable of being the powerful person you know you can be. So motivation is a real thing. Okay? And we love to have motivation because it gets us fired up. It gets us ready to go. So how do we create it? Science gives us the answers. I told you I'm a nerd. Right? And science is one of my favorite subjects. And so we're going to jump into activation energy. And activation energy is the amount of energy that's required to make a reaction happen. We know this, right? Sam, you know this, right? Because that activation energy is how much energy it takes to get your butt off the couch and actually take action on doing something that you want to do. But it's a lot, it's hard to do, it's hard to get ourselves going. And what we need is a catalyst. What we need is something that gets us going. For me, it's music. If I have a hard workout that I know I have to go and do, music goes in, I turn on my jog mix, and I can go. But I need that catalyst to generate some of that energy. What you should be asking yourself is, what are the catalysts that get you going? It might be your music. Okay? Maybe it's a note that you got from your mom or your dad or a coach or a friend or something, and you keep it and you look at it and it motivates you. It gets you the energy you need to get going. I don't know what it looks like for you because it's different for every single one of you. But everybody has something that they can tap into to give them the power and the strength and the courage to do what's hard, to do something that your principles tell you to do but that doesn't make it easy. We're motivated to do what's easy. But to live by our principles, we need some energy. We need something to help get us going. So what gets you going? More about motivation. Newton's laws also apply to motivation within humans. And Newton's law says an object at rest does what? Stays at rest. So when you're sitting there on the couch watching The Office for the 350,000th time, right, you don't feel like moving. The reason you don't feel like moving? Simple. It's simple physics. You're at rest, you're, you want to stay at rest, and you're, unless you're acted on by something, and that action's got to come from within. But the opposite of that is true, too. If something's in motion, where does it stay? In motion. It stays in motion. And so once you get going, you can actually use that to generate what they call momentum. And momentum's a real thing in your life. Once you get started, it's so much easier to keep going. Once you get started, it's so much easier to keep doing those right things. The hardest time is usually right at the start. And you have to be patient with yourself, but you have to stay on it. You have to keep trying to live your principle. But once you get the ball rolling, it keeps going. It's like pushing a 20-ton boulder down a hill. Once I get the boulder started, it's going to roll all the way to the bottom. But getting it started is the hardest part. So what can you do to generate momentum? The trick is to avoid this. Fancy words here, psychic entropy. See, if you're stuck on your phone right now, and you're showing your friends all your phone, look, look what he sent me on Snapchat. Right? You're stuck in psychic entropy. Psychic entropy is this place where we get stuck deeper and deeper in the mindlessness of something. See, I don't have to think to watch something, do I? I can turn on now, I can turn on Stranger Things, and I can just sit back and enjoy it. I can turn on a show, and I can just binge watch it, and I just enjoy it. Because it's mindless. It's entertaining, but it's mindless. It doesn't stimulate any action or anything. And we get stuck in that trap called psychic entropy, and it's hard to get out of that. And the deeper we get into it, the harder it actually gets to put it down. You've had that experience where you're like, oh, I'm just going to watch one episode. Seven hours later, you're through season two. Right? We all do this because we're stuck in this real thing called psychic entropy. So what principles can you put in place to avoid it? If you say you're going to watch one episode, you watch one episode. There's nothing wrong with watching stuff. I know I sound like I talk on Netflix all the time, but there's nothing wrong with watching an episode or two. But if two turns into 20, if one game turns into seven hours on the same game, and now you just cost yourself five hours of sleep because you're too busy playing the latest game, that's a problem. You hop on your phone and you get stuck in social media and you're there for an hour, that's a problem. So understanding these things will help you out a lot. And finish with this idea. Procrastination is not about you being lazy. Quit blaming yourself, quit running yourself down. It's not you being lazy, it's you getting stuck in your feelings. Live by your principles, that's your cure to procrastination. I do what I have to do when I have to do it. 
I'm going to do my homework when I go home at 3 o'clock today. If you live by that principle, you're going to get better. You'll get better at beating procrastination. This takes practice. It takes time. You know you guys can do it. Go get them.